tell you a story. A young couple, college sweethearts. They graduate school, begin their careers, get married and start a family. As they start to approach their 30s, they begin to say that they can, they're closing in on the American dream. They purchase their first home. Three weeks after they close on this home, the husband becomes violently ill. So this family, husband, wife, three children, ages five, three, and one, and a baby on the way, goes searching for the diagnosis that has stricken this otherwise healthy and vital 32-year-old man. Turn to your neighbor and say, four weeks later, as this man lays critically ill and dying in a hospital, doctors are circling around a cluster of diseases that they, that they know must be the thing that is killing this man, despite that all the, the fact that all the tests for these diseases have come back negative. They begin to harass the husband and ask him to tell the truth and to really open up and let them know about his IV drug use and his secret unprotected sex with men. You see, they were trying to make the case to continue looking for HIV despite multiple negative tests. Finally, the wife comes and says, Why? What are you looking for? To which the doctors reply, We're looking for HIV and sarcoidosis. So the wife, kind of perplexed because we thought we'd already ruled those things, they thought they'd already ruled those things out, says, Well, why are you looking at only those diseases? To which the doctors say, Well, as a young African American male, she becomes irate and says, Stop right there. I want you to check my husband for things that white people get. And magically, within days, they have a diagnosis. Stage 4B, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Brooklyn, New York, Timothy Stansbury, January 1st, 2009, Oakland, California, Oscar Grant, January 29th, 2010, Portland, Oregon, Aaron Campbell, March 7th, 2012, New Orleans, Louisiana, Wendell Allen, March 13th, 2014, Lawton, Oklahoma, Daniel Morgan, August 9th, 2014, Ferguson, Missouri, Michael Brown, August 12th, 2014, Los Angeles, California, Ezel Ford, September 23rd, 2014, New Orleans, Louisiana, Cameron Tillman, October 8th, 2014, St. Louis, Missouri, Vonder Myers, I apologize if I have trouble pledging allegiance to a flag that has been determined to do us part and leave our black bodies dangling at the altar with liberty and justice for all. We actually created a test that measures bias. You see words that capture good and bad. You have to associate Yankees with good and Red Sox with bad. This is very easy for a Yankee fan. But when you tell them to associate Yankee with bad and Red Sox with good, that's an impossible thing for them to do. They can't do it. They'll make mistakes. They'll take a lot longer to do it and so on. Take a test like this and now just replace Red Sox and Yankees with the groups black and white. Imagine that for half the trials on this test, you have to associate black with good whenever you see a black face or a word like love, peace, joy, friend, all these good things. And while you're doing that, you have to put white and bad together and words that mean terrible things in the world. Words like agony, devil, bomb, vomit. How hard is that for you to do is the question. We're not talking 
about your conscious attitudes. We're not talking about your conscious beliefs. We're talking about something that you yourself may not necessarily know you have. We are portrayed as the guys with the braids, pants down to our knees in a white tee with a gun. This does not reflect me or most black men. But if you turn on the TV, you think that's all we have become. <laughs> The images are everywhere. On local news, where often the rule is, if it bleeds, it leaves. Black men in handcuffs, in mugshots, behind bars. On the big screen, black men as violent criminals, as pimps, as drug dealers, and in music videos. Rappers glorifying the thug life. Because it's in the hood. So what are some of the factors that um, would cause activation of stereotypes? The more a member of a racial group fits the stereotypic profile of that group, the more likely they are to be categorized and then that stereotype will be activated. In terms of race and fear of the brain, um, researchers have associated the implicit associations test which i know you know about but it's the measure of implicit racism or the association between certain racial groups and good and bad um, people who are high in implicit bias have much stronger amygdala activation when they're looking at faces of people of other races. And those stereotypes are more likely to be used when people are under high cognitive load because they don't have the mental resources to inhibit those stereotypes. And so stereotypes come in as those shortcuts we use. They're a form of, you know, heuristic. We use them as, as rules of thumb that even though they're not accurate, um, people have found them to be useful in, in judging others. He's, uh, he's with another male, he's got a red cardinal's hat, white t-shirt, yellow socks, and khaki shorts, he's walking up like this. 25. Get us several more units over here, there's going to be a problem. Are there any available Ferguson units who can respond to Canfield and Copper Creek advised? And uh, Darren Wilson had his interaction with uh, Michael Brown. Um, Jerry Wilson didn't know a lot about Michael Brown. His interaction with him was relatively brief. Uh, and without getting too jargony about this, the social psychologists would say that Darren Wilson is forming a representation of Michael Brown. Um, he is um, trying to, to fill in the details, figuring out what type of person is Michael Brown. And so social psychologists would say is that Darren Wilson almost certainly was forming a quick representation of, of Michael Brown. If you if if your stereotype is such that you believe they are less than human mm -hmm. um, then and how does that inform how you're going to interact with that person I also don't believe in drugs for years I paid my people extra so they wouldn't do that kind of business somebody comes to them and says I have powders if you put up three four thousand dollar investment we can make 50,000 distributing, so they can resist. I want to control it as a business, to keep it respectable. I don't want it near schools. I don't want it sold to children. That's an infamia. In my city, we would keep the traffic in the dark, people, to call it. They're animals anyway, so let them lose their souls. In many cases, stereotypes are used um, as a form to justify negative treatment of particular groups. And so um, Nazi, Nazi Germany treatment of Jews is a really good example that in order to justify the very negative treatment and you know um, discrimination and prejudice against Jews, people had to view them as less than human in order to justify that treatment. Because you know, cognitively we would experience conflict if you're treating someone in this horrible manner, but yet you see them as a human and you value human life, those don't those aren't congruent. That in order for people to cope with the you know mass destruction and and murder and genocide, that we have to justify it by saying, oh well, they're less than human, therefore we can treat them that way. There's also the legacy of slavery, where in order for slave owners to justify having slaves. 
they had to, you know, rationalize it as well. They're less than human or they're barbarians or they need to be civilized and they need a good master to show them the proper way. And so those stereotypes, those those um, essentially dehumanizing a particular racial or ethnic group, that has carried on in our culture and, and is passed on and people learn that. Humanizing others and seeing them as less than human or animalistic, that tends to have an emotional component where um, people might feel disgust towards the group, they might feel contempt, they might feel fear or anger. And, and there is some emerging research on this is that if you prime people to think of African Americans um, not as a threat, but you prime them with what we call exemplars of African Americans who are not threatening. Um, say politicians or public leaders who are not threatening. And so the issue is that when um, somebody like Darren Wilson or anyone else meets an African American, the type of representation that comes to mind is not of a thug, not of somebody who is a potential criminal, but of a just an everyday citizen. The question is, are things getting worse? Um, here's the pessimistic answer. The pessimistic answer is that is uh, race becomes um, something that's on the radar, which it's on the table. And if you start getting people thinking more about race, the pessimistic answer is that people who are inclined to have more egalitarian or more pro-black views, and here I'm talking about white perceivers, the more they think about race, they would become more egalitarian, less biased. Um, unfortunately, the flip side may also be true, people who are leading the direction of having anti-black views. Um, and this could be true as, on an explicit as well as an implicit level. They might drift in the, in the opposite direction as well. So that's the pessimistic answer, is that there is evidence suggesting that if you get people thinking about race or any other issue more, it tends to push people in the direction that they were leaning already. Sir, I think implicit bias is a problem for everyone, not just police. I think, unfortunately, too many of us in our great country um, jump to conclusions about each other. And therefore, I think we need all of us to be asking hard questions about, you know, why am I feeling this way? But when it comes to policing, since it can have literally fatal consequences, I have said in my first budget we would put money into that budget to help us deal with implicit bias by retraining a lot of our police officers. And you will always have bias. But, but the point is, is that we want police officers to free themselves from that bias when they make decisions. Training people to identify the, the reality that most of us um, are going to make decisions based on um, familiarity with the people we interact with. Is this a familiar person? And then I'm going to assess it based on what I know to be familiar. Darren Wilson said he feared for his own safety. Right. We hear that. It's, it's not just those two cases, right? right? Thousands upon thousands of times we hear officers say that. They feared for their safety. That becomes almost the buzzword. That's right. That's the training. This is justified. And that's the training. Tell that's me about the that. training. Okay. The training says that whenever you use deadly force, you have to be able to justify it. So to justify it, you have to say, I either feared for the safety of myself or the safety of the public. In the morning and I ask myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? I'm tired of being poor and even worse, I'm black. My stomach hurts, so I'm looking for a purse to snatch. Cops give a damn about a Negro. Pull a trigger, kill a nigga, he's a hero. Get it back to the kids, who the hell cares? One less hungry mouth on the welfare. First ship them dope and let them deal with brothers. Give them guns, step back, watch them kill each other. It's time to fight back, that's what Huey said. Two shots in the dark, now Huey's dead. I got love for my brothers, but we can never go nowhere unless we share with each other. We gotta start making changes Learn to see me as a brother instead of two distant strangers And that's how it's supposed to be How can the devil take a brother if he's close to me? Uh, I let it go back to when we played as kids But then it changed That's the way it is Come on, come on That's just the way it is Things will never be the same That's just the way it is Oh yeah Just the way it is. Oh, yeah.
yeah. I see no changes, all I see is racist faces. Misplaced hate makes disgrace the racist. We under, I wonder what it takes to make this. One better place, let's see race the wasted. Take the evil out the people, they'll be acting right. Cause both black and white and smoke a crack tonight. And the only time we chill is when we kill each other. It takes skill to be real time to heal each other. And although it seems ever sick, we ain't ready to see a black president. Uh, it ain't a secret or concealed a fact. A penitentiary's back and it's filled with blacks. But some things will never change. Try to show another way, but it's staying in the dope game. Now tell me what's a mother to do. Being real, don't appeal to the brother in you. You gotta operate the easy way. I made a G today. But you made it in a sleazy way. Sell it back to the kids. I gotta get paid. Well, hey, well, that's the way it is. Come on. Come on. That's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. That's just the way it is. Oh, yeah. We gotta make a change. It's time for us as a people to start making some changes. Let's change the way we eat, let's change the way we live, and let's change the way we treat each other.